Hi everyone, uh, today I just want to show you some tips and some things that I found that uh, can improve the, the hot plate soldering process and the design process and the PCB manufacturing process and I just want to share this knowledge with you in order that you can avoid the same mistake that I did. Before I start I just want you to know uh, the video that was my inspiration to do all this uh, about soldering SMD component with a hot plate. So this is the video and I recommend you to see it. It's very nice and it was my inspiration to do all the video blogs that you have seen uh, this week about hot plate soldering and that stuff. So it has gone. <laughs> First of all uh, I'm going to explain the tips by uh, states. So, in the de designing states, starting with SMD connectors. When you are designing your PCB, I recommend you to use pin headers, but not the one, the ones like these ones that you know you have to drill a hole and put them in the hole because there is a version of those ones uh, that are designed to be mounted in surface and in this way you can avoid to do drills and maybe you can even avoid completely drill your your PCB and that is it's great if you don't have to do any drill that's nice so I recommend you to to seek for the SMD version of those headers because it will simplify your design and if you don't have to do any drill it's, it will be fantastic it will simplify your design and your construction process so much so I, I recommend you to, to seek for those ones now in the PCB development stage yeah, I recommend you not to use a sodium hydroxide as a developer because it seems like the temperature, the ambient temperatures uh, affects so much the, the behavior of this home, homemade uh, developer and the quality that you get with this developer is not very good so I recommend you to buy a commercial developer because they are cheap and they will give you a an awesome result in comparison with the, the developer that you can do in your home because it's I did some tests and some experiments and you get so much better quality with this commercial developer than with, than with the one that you can do in your home so I recommend you to seek for a commercial developer your PCB will be better, so much better, and that is what I want to say to you. Now with the photosensitive film, this is the PCB after the development process, and you cannot see the copper over the PCB, because over the copper is an, a film, a, the photosensitive film that has not been developed, and I recommend you to left the board, as you can see because these films prevents the solder paste to flow over other, other areas of the board that you don't want. It also prevents the corrosion to, and you know and all that stuff to get on onto your board. So uh, I recommend you to lift your board this way. And I did a, an experiment soldering a board uh, without that a photosensitive film I remove it with alcohol and it worked as with the photosensitive film but I recommend you to to left that over your PCB because it protects your PCB against the oxygen and oxidation and all that stuff and it also looks very cool <laughs> okay now with the solder paste how much solder paste do you have to put in your paths? 
Okay, that's co that comes with experience, but in this case I think it's a little better to put um, a little bit more than the necessary than putting a little bit um, little than necessary because if you if you put two solder paste you can fix it with the soldering braid and you won't have any problem with that but if you put too little it is a little bit more complicated so I recommend you to in case of doubt to put a little bit more of solder paste than you know that the other option. Now when you have your PCB with all the components soldered on it with the hot plate and all this stuff I really recommend you <laughs> to get a, a microscope, not a mag microscope but a magnifier, a binocular magnifier because I wasted one or two hours of time debugging my previous PCB with SMD component because I didn't see uh, that a uh, pad doesn't have <laughs> solder paste and you know it, it was an open circuit and it was not soldered properly and I didn't see it because I don't have a, a magnifier, a proper magnifier and I recommend you to get a uh, 20 times magnifier or 10 times magnifier a binocular one because a monocular one uh, doesn't uh, allows you allows you to see with 3D perspective you can just see with one eye and you know, that <laughs> puts out your capability to see in three dimensions so I recommend you to, to get a binocular magnifier that will allow you to see all the detail, details on your PCB and see what is wrong, see short circuits and all this stuff and it will be very, very nice so I recommend you to, to get one of those because it will save you time and money and a lot of sadness another thing that you must have is a proper uh, soldering iron this one is a little bit too big for soldering SMD components because it, you know this tip is a big one and it is not proper for SMD soldering so I recommend you to get one of those uh, soldering irons with a very sharp tip I think a 0.5 millimeters uh, tip is in order is is a very good tip for doing SMD stuff because if you have to remove a short circuit you will need a proper soldering iron with a sharp tip and the soldering braid that is maybe 90% things that, that you will need to fix your SMD problems your SMD soldering problems and a little bit of flux and that's all if you think that with just one soldering iron you are okay <laughs> no you are not okay with just one soldering iron for SMD soldering you must have at least two soldering irons and take one with your right hand and the other soldering iron with your left hand and using both soldering irons remove SMD components of course you can buy a desoldering tweezer for that purpose but they are a little bit expensive and usually they are designed to be used with a soldering station so it's a little bit uh, difficult about that so and I, rec I really recommend you to boil the soldering braid yeah, because it's the better way to remove uh, you know short circuits in your SMD components especially in the integrated circuit it's very common to have a short circuit in, a, in the pins of a integrated circuit so it will help a lot <laughs> I will do more uh, SMD soldering and SMD soldering videos and 
more videos using the hot plate, soldering different packets and you know T TQFN and all that stuff. It will take a while because now I'm I'm not in holidays. I'm studying now. Uh, I have to go to the classes and all that stuff. So it will take a little bit of time. So. Thank you very much for watching and I hope these tips will help you. <laughs> Don't do the same mistakes that I did and that is all for now. So thank you very much for watching. See ya!